What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here. So let's talk about the holidays. The holiday season is upon us right now and they'll be over probably before we know it. So it's time to start thinking about what you wanna get for your friends, your, your fellow gamers, your DM and so on. And the DMs Guild is a great resource for fifth edition uh, content if you wanna get things created by a variety of different folks covering a variety of different topics. Problem is, there's a ton of content out there and you may not know what you wanna look for, what you wanna get. So I'm very happy to say that this video is sponsored by the DMs Guild. And they reached out to me and said, hey, would you wanna do like a holiday buyer's guide? So I said, sure, let's talk about it. And they said, hey, pick out some stuff you think would be really cool to show people. We'll shoot that over to you and then cover it in the video. And then there's a couple other bonus things here at the end. So I'm gonna to try to cover things not as in depth as I normally do when I do DMs Guild related content because I have a lot to get through and we only have a limited amount of time to talk about it. So uh, I picked a variety of different things. I picked something I thought that was good for players and DMs together, something that's just a general expansive resource that ties into Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, a way to include different weapons and stuff like that, and then a fun holiday themed uh, set of encounters. And then I also have these really cool gift bundles that the DMs Guild has right now that anybody can go pick up. And I will put again links to all this in the description. Also, as a heads up, these are uh, affiliate links. So I will benefit monetarily if you're kind enough to use any of my links. But that being said, let's jump in over here. So the first one up here is called Player Primer Moonshay Isles. And I, I know what you're saying. So stop. Let me stop you there for a second. You may say, well, Ted, I'm not going to be playing in the Forgotten Realms. I'm not going to be playing in Moonshay Isles. I don't really care. Fair enough. However, I did want to say that this is why I picked this because it does things very well that you can either use them and just change the setting from the Moonshay Isles to your own homebrew world or wherever you're playing or use them as an inspiration. I'm a huge fan of the heroic chronicle concept that was uh, brought about in Explorer's Guide to Wildmount and this sort of does that and I think it does things very well. So if we go and take a look, we can see it here it is right here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different folks involved. And what I like is this gives you a really good primer for designing settlements, coming up with plot hooks tied to locations. So if you have a homebrew world like I do, you can go ahead and say, hey, uh, if I make my town, what, what information would I want people to know if they were only going to get a primer on it? Hey, they're going to go look at this town. What information should they know? Okay, here's my little blurb. What kind of adventure and plot hooks could I put there? Okay, here's one for low, low level, mid level, high level. And that's what this does. And then it also goes on to describe the different factions of the Moonshay Isle, something you should be thinking about, different factions in your own world. And then the character chronicle, the sort of thing I really wanted to discuss. So we flip through here. Uh, I can just show you here. They have a map showing the different regions and kind of the main key areas. And then if we go to a section, you'll see right here, like so here for Alaron, it gives us a little bit about the about Alaron, the main locations there, and then three plot hooks associated with it. So that is very cool. I enjoy that. Also, no bookmarks, negative points for that. Uh, and then we have our little section here on the, uh, the factions. But what I really wanted to discuss again was this character chronicle. This is sort of an adaptation and continuation or their version of the heroic chronicle. Right, so you roll on a table to figure out what your home region is, then your background, your social status, which gives you allies or rivals, what settlement you're from, and then where within that settlement, um, you know, race is. They don't have you're you're obviously determining your race and how things are handled. They also have a little bit in here about routinely the Moonshay Isles are sort of sexist. They're pulling that out. That's up to you and your DM to figure out how you want to handle that. Uh, family size for the air, different areas, relationships within your family, ally relationships, rival relationships, allies and rivals of which to choose from. Also, the last one here is uh, you get a T-Rex, essentially, which is really cool. Uh, um, and then we have our fateful moments. And this is really, in my mind, the coolest thing about the Heroic Chronicle is if something generates a fateful moment, whether or not you choose to give people that, it just adds a cool concept to your character. For example, if we were to say, uh, let's pull one of the ones out of here that I thought was really interesting. Ah, after sipping from a hidden spring found deep in a forest, you have realized you can cast speak with animals at will. All right, the Moonshay Isles have a big tie to fey creatures, so that can kind of make sense. Uh, there, and then we have some other interesting ones here, right? Uh, let's see. You were in a horrible boating accident with the sounds of, like, sirens in the distance. When you awoke, 
Uh, back home the next morning, uh, your hair stands on end whenever Fey are within 60 feet of you. Cool, interesting, unique things that helps you build out your character's story and also gives you fun, cool mechanical things you can do. Then we have a little bit about favorite foods, and then here's some mysterious secrets that you can add in, and then omens if your uh, character's part of a prophecy and what that can do. Interesting things there as well. And then they have a little bit here about adapting existing backgrounds to your um, to your current setting, which is also something you should think about, right? Like they have here, folk hero is actually a fey hero. Guild artisan is not really a guild artisan; it's a trader. Simple things you can do to make adjustments there. Next up here is Tasha's Crucible. I should show you here. Uh, Tasha's Crucible of Everything Else, Volume 1. Uh, Tasha's Crucible of Everything Else is already a best gold seller with five stars, although it only has seven ratings updated or uploaded rather in November, November 11th. And this is similar. We've seen things like this where they kind of People will release a compilation book around whatever the new book is, right? Like if it was a Xanathar's notes to everything else or whatever, this is Tasha's Crucible of everything else. You can see there's a whole bunch of people tied to this. Um, and right here, if we jump over to the book, you'll see they have, well, for one, they do have bookmarks, although they're all nonsensical, but they do have them, which I guess is a step, step in the right direction. But we have a ton of new subclasses. We have new spells, new magic items, DM tools, and then you know just a section to show what uh, what spells and things we have referenced here. So I'm not going to go through everything. Obviously, I couldn't. This video would be ridiculously long. But I did pick out a couple of things that I thought were worth mentioning. They do have rules in here for uh, a remastered version of the Four Elements Monk a remastered version of the Wild Magic Sorcerer, and a remastered version of the Undying Patron Warlock. Uh, them, like so many of us, have realized that there is some issues with those classes, some more than others. Uh, so they went ahead and came up with rules and ideas on how to fix those, which I appreciate. Uh, and then I figured I could take a look at probably one of the subclasses, maybe two, uh, and then maybe like a spell and some magic items, and then we'll move on. So what we're going to do is jump ahead to the druid because I actually really like both of these druids a lot. So the first druid, I'm not going to really talk about, I'll talk about the second one, is called the Circle of the Bow, and this is um, a uh, sort of a, a plant druid, which is something we don't really have a good version of. We don't have like a plant mancer or a plant master in 5th edition, and this is kind of giving that option. And it does what I said I often very enjoy, where it gives you alternate versions of your wild shape. This, I think this was a ranger. There was like a primal guardian ranger or something that was kind of similar to this. Uh, or maybe that was a druid that got left behind, but it's basically you can use your wild shape to turn into a tree instead, and it gives you benefits for that. But the other one I like here is the Circle of the Dragon Friend, right? We all love dragons, or at least I do, and I like dragon-based subclasses, and that's what this is. You basically choose a dragon type at level two. You get to speak, read, and write draconic, and you get a new version of your wild shape that you can use in, in, in place of it. And it's this lesser Draco form that you see right here. Uh, and it, un unlike your other wild shape forms, you can speak draconic uh, and use your hands as normal. Uh, but again, you're limited to only speaking draconic. So if your party member doesn't speak draconic, that doesn't help. But normally in wild shape, it wouldn't matter. Uh, but you do retain your strength, dexterity, and constitution scores while you're in your Draco form. But the benefit is a lot of the abilities here are tied to uh, your... Some of them are tied to your spell safe DC, I believe. So we can see our armor class is dex plus wisdom, archon mod plus five times our druid level and hit points. Uh, it is still a wild shape feature, right? So it lasts... It has the same statistics as wild shape and how often you can use it. Uh, has a claw attack that does attack roll is equal to your wisdom modifier plus your proficiency bonus. So we're not actually using really our strength or dex. And it does damage equal to a d8 plus our wisdom modifier. And then we either get a line breath weapon or a cone breath weapon, depending on the type of dragon that we pick. And the damage, as you can see, it's your spell save DC uh, for dexterity or constitution saving throws. And it scales up as we level up. Starts at 2d6, and then eventually ends up all the way at 7d6 in either a cone or a line. And then at 6th level, we get a special trait for exploration tied to the type of dragon. Uh, we can either be amphibious, getting us uh, swim speed equal to our walk speed, and breathe water and air. 
the ability to climb and have advantage on dex and strength checks to make us climb or effects that would knock us prone. Or if we're Silver Dragon, we can cast the Fog Cloud spell uh, without expending a spell slot equal to our Wisdom modifier times per long rest, but it does not obscure our vision or tunneling, uh, basically getting a burrowing speed. Um, and we can burrow through solid, uh, cannot be used to burrow through solid rock, ice, metal, or wood or similar substances, but we can basically make a hole big enough just for ourselves to fit through. At 10th level, we get a greater Draco form, which uses both of our wild shape abilities, but it gets a little bit extra. Uh, we get a lot more hit points. I don't know if our original one got a fly speed. It did not. This one does. Um, our claw attacks do, uh, I think they're pretty much the same, but uh, our breath weapons have increased in size from a 30-foot line to a 60-foot line, a 15-foot cone to a 30-foot cone. However, the damage is still the same. And we do get access to a Frightful Presence ability. And then lastly, at 14th level, we get Draconic Evasion, which is basically the evasion ability that rogues and monks have, except it works for Constitution and Dexterity. There's a ton of new spells in here too, but I wanted to skip to one in particular because a lot of them are very in-depth and very long, and there was one I thought that was really funny that I wanted to talk about, and that was Tensor's Climbing Wall. It's a second level spell, and basically a series of opaque handholds appear within a uh, within range on a surface up to 120 feet. Uh, and it says, including a moving or dangerous surface such as a waterfall, fire, uh, or fire, and lasts for the duration, which is concentration up to an hour. And basically, yeah, uh, it's a 120 foot long set of handholds that gives everybody a plus 10 to ability checks to climb it. So like, if there's a wall and you don't have teleportation or anything like that, you wouldn't with second level, at the time you have second level spells, you can just make a bunch of handholds and now everybody can just climb the wall. I think that that's a really simple, useful spell. Uh, and there's some interesting magic items here as well. Uh, one thing I did want to draw attention to is the figurine of wondrous power coprolite monkey. For those of you who don't know what a coprolite is, that is a fossilized piece of poop. So it's literally a shit monkey. Uh, and that it's kind of similar to the three uh, three goats, right? The three goats where there's three different versions of this. That being said, if we jumped to the next book that I wanted to cover here, this is Armaments of Legacy. This is something if you are familiar with Critical Role, you might have seen in some of the, the sort of weapons from that uh, or, or the sort of artifacts from that that sort of become exalted and sort of grow over time. This is a concept that has existed for a long time. There was even a book back in 3.5 called Weapons of Legacy that basically did just that. And that's what Armaments of Legacy is. It is a spiritual successor to that, giving you the option and talking you through a little bit, first of all, at the start here about what legacy items are, how to tie them into your story, which is very useful, and then the different types of legacy items, and then actual legacy items themselves, showing that they have basically something that you get at first level, and then fifth level, 10th level, 15th level, and like you know, as you're leveling up the cool things they can do. I like using these in my games, especially if you can tie something interesting to a character's background. Um, then they have something they might want to bring with them as they level up and it has, you know, they get to see it grow. And the one I thought would be interesting here to talk about was the durable armor. Uh, basically, it starts off essentially as adamantine armor, uh, then it becomes plus one and adamantine armor. Then uh, I'm just saying that because it makes you immune to critical hits. Then later on, it could be uh, it could be medium armor, which means it could technically be hide armor. Uh, I'm just using adamantine as an example. Then it becomes plus two. Uh, and gives resistance to, I'm sorry, and bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage from non-magical sources are reduced by three. Uh, and it says this is cumulative with the heavy armor master feat, which would be reducing it by six. And then lastly, it is a plus three to AC. And then you have just flat out resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magic on top of the damage reduction as well. So pretty cool. Oh, and at the end, they do have a little bit about rune stones and runic magic as well, if that's something that interests you. Uh, some interesting, cool things there as well. And then my last sort of official one here is called 12 Christmas Slays. This is our fun holiday-themed one. It is 12 uh, expertly crafted and gorgeously illustrated Christmas monsters to spice up your holiday adventures. We can go ahead and see what they are here. We have an Electrum Dragon, which is featured here right on the front. I like the concept of this being the offspring of a gold and silver dragon. 
we have the Grumbler, we have Jackie Frost, we have Krampus, we have a Nutcracker Prince, Radiant Reindeer, Santa Claus, we have Snowman at Arms, which I was really sad when I scrolled to it and it wasn't basically a snowman version of the character from He-Man, but it is what it is. Um, and again, we have our Electrum Dragon here and you can see it's right here. It's got also, I love the art for all of these. Um, and it, you know, you can see right here, if we look at our Electrum Dragon, it has a couple of different breath weapons. It has a Winter Breath, which is cold damage. It has a Hearth Breath, which is a sort of a warming uh, breath that gives temporary hit points. Uh, it has Joyful Presence as opposed to uh, Frightful Presence. I don't know, just very cute things there. And then it has all the different stat blocks as well, right? Adult, Electrum, Wormling. Here's our, here's our animated Christmas tree. Um... The Grumbler, I think, is like the Grinch. Yeah, it's basically the Grinch. Here's our, our sort of, if we combine the Heat Miser and Jack Frost together into one character. We have good old Krampus. Can't go wrong with that. Um, well, we've got uh, Mer... I forget how you pronounce this, but this is like from, I think it's either Swedish or Danish lore. I could be completely wrong on that, but this is the one that like comes into your house if you don't like sing to it or something i forget what it is and then like you have to have a contest and it drinks all your beer it's very interesting folklore stuff a lot of good things you can just use from what we have in the real world where we have a nutcracker prince here uh here's our glowing reindeer santa claus here's snowman at arms this is only a challenge rating one half it just has instead of arms it has weapons right we have a long sword it can throw snowballs uh, and then we have a, a white elephant. Clever, right, for white elephant parties. It's in a monster here. And then there's the Yule Lad, which is a, is sort of like a gremlin. Um, yeah. And uh, it says, don't miss the next volume of Hall of Danger, 10 Hazards of Love, coming in February for Valentine's Day. So those are the ones I kind of wanted to show off here. I thought they covered a lot of stuff. We have player options we have dm options we have encounters we have things to export and expand your game whether it's heroic chronicle stuff or legacy weapons but the dms guild also has where is it these uh things called gift boxes um but if you go ahead and look at these they're bundles for different uh for different groups of people right so this is the gift box for the treasure goblin and you can see right here, it gives you a whole bunch of different things for people who want to like have magic items, right? We have Blackstaff's Treasury of Items, 50 Magic Items from Salt Marsh, Ancestral Weapons, Artifacts of the Guild, Artifacts of Old, Calpurnia's 101 Lesser Magic Items, Esquiel's Guide to Magic Weapons, Harmon's Harvesting Handbook, Magic Items and Potions, and Monster Loot Volume 1 covering the Monster Manual. I also have right here in this one, gifts for the monster hunter and we have a whole bunch of different monster based ones as well we have bag of holding monsters above and below versions this looks like pokemon yellow so i guess there's like some pokemon kind of oh look within this pocket realm dwelled creatures unlike anything ever seen before monsters that reflected the nations magic and legends that made up eberron's material plane the monsters of the pocket realm seem destined for endless conflict so it's that's pretty cool we have creatures of eberron dalliance's monster compendium ghosts DM option, Monster Talents. I've covered this one on my channel already. It's very good. I like it a lot, the Monster Talent series. Fake Compendium 3. Legendary Bestiary, Legendary Actions for Low-Level Monsters, which is great. That's always something good to expand your encounters. Legendary Hunts. This whole series is fantastic. Uh, Monsters of the Infinite Plains. The Yokai Compendium, which is relatively new. And Theros Bestiarium, 72 Monsters for your Theros campaign. I also know that there are other uh, things for this. There is... Uh, the gift box for the cartographer. Let's see if we can get it to pull up this time. For the cartographer, for the spellkeeper, for the family that plays together, uh, and then for the character creator. I was hoping I could just find the gift boxes right off the bat, but I, I couldn't find... Ah, here they are. There we go. So we've got for the cartographer, for the character creator, for the family, and for the spellkeeper. We'll just look at these real quick just to see what we get. So the cartographer is going to give us just a whole bunch of different series of maps, battle maps and things that you can use to compile together. And look at the price, right? This would normally be 35 bucks. This is down to eight. For the character creator, we have a lot of interesting things about backgrounds and characters and races, right? We have the elf and orc had a little baby, the parentage one. We have birds of paradise. I think this was the other, other versions of Aracocra. 
Uh, multi-classing on here, Oath of the Nightbringer of Warlocks and Patrons, giving you options for that. Snow and Ice, things nasty and nice. The complete Arcan the complete series is fantastic. Complete Arcanist Handbook. Uh, spirit, this is a new class, the Spirit Guide class. Urban Archetypes, 30 themed subclasses. Gift for the Family has a bunch of family-friendly adventures in here, right? Like uh, Clonker's Guide to Being a Hero. Uh, Ginny D's Vicious Mockery Insults here. Uh, Gnarl's Candy Compendium, Poop Bird Poop Fight. I mean, great quality things here. The Spooky Goose. Uh, and then we have, uh, for the Spellkeeper, this will be a bunch of options for new spells, right? Forbidden Spells, Larlock's Vault of Magic of Netheril, Spells from the Far Realm, Blackstaff's Compendium of Spells, Vault of Magic, and so on. This is a great time to be in Dungeons & Dragons. It's a great way for you can get all of those. Like I said, most of those were like, around the seven to eight to like 15 maybe 20 dollars and depending on the person in your life if you're looking to give them a gift box of just here's a whole bunch of content for you to take a look through to run games to run games that you know, that i'm playing in with you to add to your character creation you know habit whatever it is those are options as well so there will be links in the description to all of the things that i covered at the start the ones that i personally picked as well as links to all of these gift boxes as well in case you want to give them to any of your friends again i do use affiliate links so if you are kind enough to use one of my links i will mon uh, benefit monetarily from them but i did want to say a big shout out and thank you to lisa and the dms guild for hooking me up with this and sponsoring this video it's awesome. There's so much content. I actually was going to be doing a video like this anyway, sort of like a best picks from the DMs Guild. Uh, and then this just prompted me to actually make it. So a big shout out and a thank you to them. Go ahead and let me know in the comments too, right? Is there anything that you think I should put? Maybe I'll add like to the description if you guys give me some good options or I'll, I'll make like a separate post on social media about what you think are the must-haves this holiday season from the DMs Guild and I'll add them to a list somewhere. Or maybe I'll build like a Google Drive and, and put a whole bunch of lists in there. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.